Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head down to the Netherlands once again and we're going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel a good number of times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years. This will be review number five or six that I'm doing from this brewery, if memory serves me correctly. So we've had quite a few different styles from them. And I would say that this brewery are probably one of the most accessible Dutch breweries you're going to find across the world. But the beer that we're going to have a look at today is one that is a little bit unusual in terms of the special group of breweries that these guys belong to. So I have to say I'm very curious to see how it turns out. Hopefully it's an interesting review and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So um, yeah, for this review then we are going to go to Berkel Enschot in North Brabant in the south of the Netherlands and we're going to return to Brouwerij de Koenigshoven who of course sell their beers under the name La Trappe and these guys are one of the Trappist breweries. So this particular beer is the La Trappe Bock beer. It comes in at 7% ABV, and I think you know what style this one is. But um, I think this one could well be the only example of a Bock Lager beer from the Trappist breweries. As of April 2021, at least, that could change in the future, of course. But I think as of this particular point in time, this may well be the only Bock beer that you'll find from the different Trappist breweries. So uh, yeah, as I said, very curious to see how it turns out. So let's see how we get on. So since this is a Dutch review as well, a massive shout out to my friends in the Dutch Beer Collective. We have Remy Den Doop, who is Beer Geek Holland, the OG Dutch beer tuber. We have Thomas Hoendam, my lover, uh, from, <laughs> from Thomas Open. He's got some great reviews as well. We've got Herbin Caspers, who is Dutch Beer Geek, the Black IPA Slag. And we have T Douglas Hesselmans, who is Beers with Douglas, the most gangster of them all. All four of them are lovely, lovely guys. They've got some great reviews. They film both in Dutch and in English. So what I'll do is I'll put the link to the Dutch Beer Collective in the video description below, as I always do with my Dutch reviews. So make sure you go and check them out, show them some love, watch some of the reviews. Great guys, and you will no doubt see them feature on my channel again at some point in the fairly near future. But uh, yeah, definitely go and show those guys a little bit of love. But yeah, let's crack on with this review then. So as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Brauerei de Koenigshoven and the La Trappe beers before. And we will no doubt add a few more to that list in the fairly near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider that are subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Dutch beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to quite regular at the moment because I still have quite a few Dutch beers that came from my trip to the Netherlands recently, and no doubt we will get some more at some point later in the year but as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about Brauerei de Koenigshoven and the La Trappe beers then so the La Trappe beers are produced by the Koenigshoven Abbey known as Abde Onzelieve Ro van Koenigshoven, to give it its Dutch name. Apologies if that pronunciation was bad. But this was founded back in 1881 in Berkel-Enschot in North Brabant down in the Netherlands. So the Abbey is part of the Order of Cistercians of Strict Observance. So if we go back in history a little bit, in the 1880s, the situation faced by the monastic orders in France was becoming more difficult. The monks of the Mont des Cats Abbey in France feared that they were about to be driven from the country, and so they looked for an alternative site for their, for their monastery, their Abbey. So Abbot Dominique Lesses sent Father Sebastian Wyatt to the Netherlands where he had many military contacts and through his former lieutenant Antoine Arts and Father de Beer of the CMM brothers he met a guy called Caspar Hoban who owned some land buildings known as de Schapskoy which had been built by the Crown Prince William in 1834 near Tilburg. So Abbot Lesaz didn't originally want to found a completely new monastery, but he was persuaded by Father Wyatt and Hoban and then agreed to lease this property. But the early years of the monastery were very difficult at uh, Dick Shapskui, and the Tilburg brothers managed to, to help the monks a, a lot to establish this brewery. But a later abbot, Nevada Schweikert, expanded the farm, but this didn't help the financial situation. They were still having some quite major problems. But as the son of a Munich brewer, he then decided to establish a brewery in 1884, and this really 
helped the financial situation of the community and kind of revitalised it a little bit. Later on in 1890, Dom Willebrordus Verbruggen was appointed as the first abbot of Königshoven and he began the building of a new abbey after the status of the monastery was raised in 1891. But this again threatened the financial position of the monastery as did the establishment of two further refuge houses for religious communities from France, the Zundert and the Chameau houses. Uh, but to solve these issues, a new abbot, Simon de Busson, was appointed and in 1931, the 50th anniversary of the Abbey was celebrated, so things did go quite well under Simon de Buisson. And then in 1937, the Königsort Abbey was founded as the first Dutch nunnery. During the Second World War, several of the Abbey's monks were executed by the Nazis, but after the war, a new abbot, Wilbrod van Dijk, was elected, and, and the Abbey uh, had been doing well ever since, actually, under the guidance of a few abbots that came after him. But uh, as previously mentioned, the brewery part of the abbey was founded in 1884 and these guys owned several bars in the area. But for a period, their beers were brewed by Artois under licence, but then in 1980 they began brewing for themselves again. A little bit later though, in 1999, due to the difficulty that the ageing monks were encountering with running the brewery, they established a limited liability company as a subsidiary of the Bavaria Brewery, who are one of the big macro producers in the Netherlands. And this actually caused a dispute with the Trappist Association, who said this broke their rules and the brewery uh, was too commercialised at this point so they were stripped of the, the Trappist title for a while from what I understand but in 2005 an agreement was made whereby the monks took a more active role in the brewery and they were once again allowed to display the Trappist label on their beers and they have been able to do that ever since so um, yeah kind of interesting I have to say it's quite a complex story these guys but a brewery that started out uh, or an abbey that started out in France moved to the Netherlands and then established its brewery in the Netherlands in 1884 so yeah they've been through quite a lot at the uh, de Koningshoven Abbey could you say so um, yeah that covers your history section of the video I always enjoy doing the history sections of the different Trappist beers but um, yeah that's all I've really got to tell you about this brewery and the Abbey for the moment if you want to learn more about the brewery and Abbey I'll put the websites to both in the video description for you below to check out and uh, yeah, if you want to learn more about the different beers that they do, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can, of course, check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn about all the different beers that these guys have done. They've got quite an interesting barrel aging programme when it comes to the Corporal, uh, actually. But I think on the channel, if I remember rightly, I've reviewed the Isidore. I've reviewed the, um, the Blonde, the Triple and the Corporal, and I think I've reviewed another one. Um, as well actually but I honestly can't remember what that was but um, yeah this as I say is my fifth or sixth review from uh, the Latrat beers or Brawler de Koenigshoven however you want to describe them but uh, yeah let's crack on then and have a little look at this beer I have to say I'm very very curious to see how it turns out so as you can see as with many bot beers this one has the goat on it so the story of the bot beers uh, and first off, the bot beers are lager beers, which means they undergo cold temperature fermentation or bottom, or they use bottom fermenting yeasts, which uh, require a temperature, a fermentation temperature of between 8 to 12 degrees, roughly. Um, but yeah, the bock beers hail from a little town called Einbeck, which is in one of the Saxon, uh, Saxony states in Germany. I forget which one. But um, the name Bock arose from uh, the fact that this beer was originally known as Einbecker. So when the Einbeckers took their beer down to Munich, the Munchners laughed at the um, the way these people spoke. And you know, it, to them it sounded like they were saying Bock beer. So that became the kind of adopted name of the beer. And Bock, of course, in German means goat. So this is why on Bock beers you often find the goat. So um, yeah, kind of interesting. That's a very brief history of the um, the Bock beer style, but you get lots of different Bocks, you know, you get a single Bock, you get a My Bock, a Heller Bock, a Doppel Bock, there's probably a few others that I'm not thinking of at the moment as well, but um, yeah, certainly very, very nicely presented, uh, a little bit different in terms of artwork from what you would normally get from the trap, but you know, uh, quite similar at the same time. So there you can see Trappist written on the bottle, I'm not sure how well you can see the, the glass art on this one, let me just try and cover that and see. Maybe you can see it a little bit better now, but uh, yeah, you've also got a quite unique bottle cap on this one as well. But as we said earlier, this one is a 7% bulk lager beer, and usually from these things, of course, you expect a nice big oily malty 
caramelly kind of thing. So uh, yeah, a little bit different from the Mertzens, of course, which are a bit kind of lighter and biscuity. Um, so yeah, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. Very curious to see what this one has in store for us. I think I also forgot to mention earlier that I got this beer through um, Sistembolag here in Sweden. It was released as part of the Tilferig assortment. Exactly what date, I couldn't tell you, but this beer has been released several times through the um, the temporary assortment here um, here in Sweden. You see, the, they kind of circulate the Trappist beers. Like every so often you get the, the Trapp Quadrupil, and then you'll get the Triple, you'll get a few kind of random things from Chimay and stuff like this. You know, the Belgian Trappist beers, uh, well, Belgian and Dutch Trappist beers, amongst other things, they circulate around quite a little bit, actually. So, uh, yeah, we just need to be careful with this one, of course, because it look, as you always get with these kind of yeast forward beers of Belgium and the Netherlands, if you pour them too aggressively, you get too big a head on them. And I think, I think we might just have got this one okay. So, there we are. Yeah, and it does have a wee bit of sediment on it, which normally you don't get from the German brewed versions of this beer. But I was quite surprised in the Netherlands, um, when I was there last time, there was a lot of Mertzens floating around, and I didn't realise that the Mertzens were actually as popular in the Netherlands almost as they were in uh, Germany. So that was an interesting thing to, uh, to find out when I was there last time. So, um, yeah. Well, um, as you can see with this beer, though, it's poured with a nice finger and a half of a frothy, I would say light beige coloured head. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there, but overall it looks really nice. And if you shine the light through this beer, I'm not sure how well it's gonna show up on the camera. I think on the camera, it looks like it's a kind of dark rosewoody type color, but if you shine the light through this beer, it's actually a very, very deep ruby. It's not far off the same color. That's my uh, hoodie that I've got on, my lovely fluffy hoodie from Uniqlo in Japan. But um, yeah, in terms of a bulk beer, it's certainly one of the redder ones that I've come across. It's almost a little bit more close. It's also, it's almost a little bit closer to the color of a Doppelbock, like a lighter Doppelbock than it is to um, what I would normally expect of a bock. You know, normally you'd expect a bulk beer to be roughly about this color here. So um, yeah, this one is quite unique in that sense. But when you shine the light through it, you can see little bits of particle just Kind of floating around which i think works um which i think works very very nicely but i mean overall it's um a nice looking beer but definitely one of the darker bot beers i've come across remember the color of your beer depends on uh, a couple of different things one the type of malts that you use two the length of your wort boil the longer you boil the wort the more the sugars caramelize thus you get a darker color of beer um and uh, you know adjuncts and barrel aging can also play a role in this i'm not sure with this one if they will have added a little bit of uh, brew sugar and things like that. It might well tell you on the back of the bottle here, but it says the only Trappist Bock ale in the world, chestnut coloured with a beige head, a unique seasonal ale with a dry uh, and smoked herbal flavour and a vigorous bitterness which fuses amazingly with a licorice undertone, serving temperature between 10 and 14 degrees. So they're saying a Bock ale in this one. Hmm. That's quite interesting. So maybe they've just taken a German Bock recipe and brewed it as an ale instead of a, a lager beer then that would kind of make sense so maybe this one isn't a lager beer actually but usually a bock is a lager beer so yeah i don't know what to expect from this one now we just need to see so um you can see the head has gone down quite nicely from this one so i guess we can take a look at the aroma now so let's go for it yeah no it definitely smells like an ale this to be honest it's a bit too kind of bready and things to be a lager to be honest it just smells a little bit too thick almost so yeah, interesting for sure. But um, if it is a an ale, I wouldn't be surprised if there might be a little bit of brew sugar in this one. This of course is quite a common thing to do with the, um, the sort of Trappist or Abbey type beers. And that's how they usually maintain a fairly sort of thin mouthfeel when you think about the um, the alcohol content of some of these beers, you know, if you compare the, you know, the, the 10, 11% quadrupels to the imperial stouts that you'd have of the same strength, you know, relatively speaking, the quadrupel does feel a little bit kind of lighter and crisper uh, in the mouthfeel. So that's the trick that they do to get the alcohol strength up a little bit without effect in the mouthfeel. But yeah, this beer smells very, very nice. So it doesn't, it doesn't smell overly different from 
you know, a, a kind of German bot beer in a sense. It just smells thicker, if you like. So as you get with these traditional Belgian style beers, we should say we need to be careful with that, of course, because this beer is from the Netherlands, not from Belgium. But as you get with these kind of Abbey style uh, beers, they are very kind of yeast focused, of course, and that's exactly what you get here. So the backbone of this beer is a nice kind of doughy brown bready kind of quality. It's a little bit, I don't know if I'd go as far as saying it's a rye bread, but it's certainly a very sweet sort of wholemeal brown bread that you get out of this one. There are one or two little bread crusty elements in there, which I certainly like. Um, so yeah, the aroma out of this is um, it's lovely, to be honest with you. I love the big kind of bready backbone that this beer has. Um, I can see why they say it's a little bit herbal, because maybe in a way the bread, uh, the kind of bready notes, um, do make it seem like that in a sense, but yeah, the um, mm. so yeah, the the aroma that comes out of this beer is, as I say, definitely quite um, quite an interesting one for sure. Um, but yeah, brown bready backbone in there, a little bit of bread crust. Then on top of that, you've got all these kind of brown sugars in there. So you do have a tiny little bit of a kind of treacly note out of this one. I would say that that's quite minimal though. Mainly it's a big oily and sweet caramel. You do get some nice sort of McVitie's digestive biscuit elements in there, but I wouldn't say they are too prominent. The brown sugar in this beer is more about the sweet caramel, just with a little toasty uh, note there. And as I say, a little bit of that kind of treacly molasses sort of thing in the middle. Um, but yeah, you've got some nice woody elements. Um, You've got some lovely kind of woody elements just sitting underneath um, this one. So um, yeah, I really like how that how, how it goes about its business actually. So um, yeah, the aroma that comes out of this beer is awesome, and from the the kind of malty and yeasty side of things. Um, but yeah, lots of kind of oily brown sugar in there, a nice kind of bready doughy backbone. Um, is there anything more we can say about it? Nasty, I don't think so. Yeah, a few woody undertones, nice big kind of doughy bready thing with a bit of bread crust, bit of treacle, sweet caramel, a little bit of toasty brown sugar, a wee touch of biscuit. I think that summarises it quite nicely on the kind of malty, yeasty side of things. On the hoppy side of things, it is kind of what you'd expect. It's got a little bit of that kind of noble hop quality to it. Quite often these sort of Trappist uh, Abbey beers will use either, a, you know, they'll use a lower alpha acid noble type hops, sometimes ones that are... Um, that were grown in, in uh, Belgium, or you probably have some hop farms in the Netherlands too, I would guess. But um, yeah, I would guess that it'd be something that could be like a Haller Tower, a Tittenanger that's in this one, potentially a Czech Sats, or even a, a Slovenian, you know, Styrian Golding or something like this. Um, it smells a little bit smoother, so that does make me wonder if it could be a Slovenian hop that's in this one. Because the Czech ones would be, the, the Slovenian ones are a little bit more kind of smooth, the Czech ones are a little bit more spicy, whereas the German ones are a little bit brighter. But at the same time, you've got a wee bit of herbal quality in here, which does make me wonder, could it be a Belgian-grown hop that's in here? Because um, the Belgian ones are a little bit of a mix between the English and the Germans. They've got a little bit more of the herbal and earthy sort of thing you'd expect from... Uh, from uh, from the English hops. But yeah, you do get a little bit of earthiness on the back of the nose there. There is a bit of herbal quality from the hoppy side of the beer. A little bit of floral aromaticity out of this one, but not too much. And then you've got some nice kind of little grassy notes on the kind of front of the nose there. But behind that, of course, you've got a wee bit of a fruity note in here. And um, yeah, the thing you'll notice about this beer is that it does give you a very slight kind of cakey note, but then you've got some nice juicy, um, you've got a nice little bit of a juicy fruity element in there. So. Um, what would we say about this one, actually? Um, the fruity note, for me, it does have a wee touch of a kind of raisiny sharpness to it. There's a bit of a kind of dainty, pruney kind of thing in there, absolutely. Um, you know, maybe one or two little pear-y, apricot -y notes as well, and a wee bit of a sort of figgy, blackcurranty element coming out of it as well. The fruits aren't too prominent in this one, I would say, um, but they do... They're definitely there. I don't find them as powerful as, as you might, for example, in a triple or a quadruple, but um, it's um, it certainly works very, very nicely. That's that's for sure. We can safely say that. But um, yeah, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this beer before you get stuck into it. But I think it's about time that we try this one now. So yeah, this one is the La Trappe Bock beer coming in at 7% ABV. I thought it was going to be a Bock Lager beer, but uh, apparently it's a Bock Ale. So let's just see how we get on. Slange it, skull, cheers, let's get stuck in. Or I should say Prost, because it's a Dutch beer. Prost. Yeah. 
yeah that's pretty damn solid actually and I think from the mouthfeel yeah definitely an eel um, if I was blind tasting this I would definitely would not say it's a lager that's for sure um, the other thing I'll say about this one is that it does the aroma that you pick up does translate into the flavour pretty well actually so yeah we can definitely say that about this one for sure but um, yeah it gets a thumbs up from me I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink that again no way it would be uh, yeah I'd love to try I'd love to go to the, the monastery and try some of the beers in their uh, cafe and things like this that would be absolutely awesome to do but um, yeah definitely uh, impressed with this one so I like it thumbs up to the guys at uh, La Trappe Brewery, to the monks at La Trappe and Brauerei de Koenigshoven, this is pretty cool. As they said, this is the only Trappist Bock. So um, yeah, let's break this down then. So straight away across the middle of your palate you get that nice sort of wholemealy, brown bready sort of thing. You can feel a little bit of that kind of typical Trappisty, doughy, yeasty kind of thing coming out of this one. It's not too thick in this beer though, right enough. It does feel quite relaxed in a sense, but for me the doughy, yeasty elements come out on the back of that middle third of your tongue. The doughy kind of yeasty quality of the beer sits there. It's a little bit more bready and smooth on the kind of front half of the, um, it's a little bit more kind of, uh, as I say, bready and smooth on the, the kind of front half of that middle third of your tongue, but I like it. I certainly do like it. Um, yeah, it works. Um, it works in that sense. What you'll also notice as well is if you go to the front corners of your palate, then move diagonally back, the beer gets a little bit more. Um, it gets a little bit more sort of um, woody and. Uh, it gets a little bit more sort of like woody and you get a few kind of undertones out of it. If you go to the dead centre of your palate as well and move a little bit further forward, you will get one or two little nutty um, elements to this one. It actually does come across a little bit more like a doppelbock, as I say, than a single bock, if that makes sense. So it's almost like an ale version of a doppelbock. And as I say, it's the kind of thickness of the bread and the yeasty qualities that, that um, really make it an ale rather than a, a lager beer. And a lager beer is just a little bit lighter and kind of cleaner than this in a sense. So, um, yeah, and I have to say that was one of the things that I was wondering about with this particular beer. I mean, you would, you need different equipment to brew a lager beer than an ale. And that's what I was thinking in my head at the time was, you know, do these guys have the equipment to brew lager beers as well as ales? But, uh, yeah, obviously it's a bulk ale, as they said. But, uh, yeah, on top of that nice bready layer that the beer has, in the very centre of your palate, you can feel a little bit of a kind of concentrated treacly molasses sort of thing. As you move out from that a little bit, as you move out from that a little bit, you get a little bit more of a kind of oily, um, brown bready kind of thing. So uh, it's well, not a brown bread, an oily kind of uh, caramelly note. And as you move way out kind of beyond that, that's when you start to get a little bit of a kind of biscuity note. But I wouldn't say it's an overly grainy biscuit. It's just a little bit of a kind of cookie-ish note there. But yeah, concentrated treacle in the centre of your tongue, a bit more of an oily caramel, um, but still a little bit caramelised. And then further out towards the edge of the palate, You've got a little bit of um how would we say you, as i say you get a little bit more of a kind of biscuit element to this one so it's quite a straight shooting beer in a lot of ways this is definitely not the most complex beer that you're going to come across from the trappist brewery it's absolutely not but you know you wouldn't expect it to be in honesty so um yeah i think that covers the middle third of the palette quite well in this one to be honest but um yeah on the border region between middle third and back third of your palate, you get a little bit of a kind of doughy bread, bready kind of build up and you get a wee bit of a bread crusty kind of grainy note sitting on top of it. Then on the back third of your palate, you've got a nice, um, you've got a nice kind of um, smooth brown bready sort of thing. Um, so yeah, you do get a little bit more of the graininess out of the brown bread on the back of the palate. And some of the more airy, yeasty flavours kind of sit on top of that. So at the back of your palate, the flavour kind of starts with a height like this, and it just gradually condenses down as you go further forward. Then as you go into the middle third of the palate, it condenses down quite dramatically. And then it's just a little bit more dense um, as you go into the middle of your palate. But I certainly like how that um, how that goes together. So. Again, thumbs up to, to Koenigshoven and the trap for this one. Let's look at the hoppy side of the beer. It's 
So um, yeah, back corners of the palette, there's a nice little bit of, um, of earthiness there. As you move further forward, it becomes a little touch more kind of herbal in a sense. And then as you move towards the front corners of the palette, it's got a little bit more kind of floral aromaticity to it, which I am. Um, which I do quite like. But then yeah, around the front curve of the palette, there's a little bit of grassiness there, and it does in fairness have a wee touch of, um, of zestiness to it. So this makes me wonder, could it be a Chekhov that's in this? Because it does, it does give you just a wee touch of spice and a little bit of zestiness too. So I'm wondering, could it be Czech sats that's in here, or jatits as the Czech would call it? That wouldn't surprise me, but at the same time, you do have a wee bit of the more kind of earthy and herbal character that you might expect of Belgian hops um, and as I say there, pro there probably are hops that are grown in the Netherlands um, I don't know how they would differ actually sorry about the edit there guys my computer just decided it was going to randomly play a video without me asking it to so there we go but as I was saying the green component in this one fits the kind of uh, malty and yeasty backbone of this beer quite well but let's move on to that front third of your palate where you always get those nice uh, fruity esters out of the hops so a border region once again between front third and middle third of your palate again you get a little bit of a doughy kind of yeast, uh, yeasty build up in there a wee bit of a kind of bread crusty element and then the base of that front third of your palate is again this sort of homely brown bready kind of thing but sitting on top of that you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters roll their way um, out of the beer but um, yeah, it's uh, the fruity esters on this one are kind of what you would expect. So let's go through those. Um, you do get an element of a kind of phenolic thing out of this beer. Kind of, it, it's a little bit akin to what you get from a Belgian Dubois. And as I say, quite often with these kind of monastery Trappist type beers, they will put a little bit of um they will put a little bit of a um a bit of brew sugar into them and that quite often helps give you that kind of phenolic feel so you do get that so at the very back of that front third of your palate you get an almost kind of cakey vibe out of this one and you get those dainty kind of pruny type vibes on the type flavors on that very back of the uh, front third of your tongue but there's a little bit of a kind of um and there is a wee touch of a raisiny sharpness there when you take it in, but as you move further forward you get dainty, kind of pruny notes, and then you start to get a more kind of juicy figgy thing and then a sort of black currant layer um, as you move into the kind of front half of your front third of your tongue. And sitting on top of that there's potentially just a little bit of a more kind of blackberry element coming out of this one. So that's potentially interesting quite as well. So the fruity side of this beer is quite akin to what you might expect of a doppelbock except for the uh, the kind of phenolic elements which make it a little bit more like um, a belgian uh, double actually so yeah and the fruits i would say overall they are a little bit sort of oily in a sense but i think it's a little bit of an oily kind of slickness to them so um yeah that's definitely an interesting point to note about this uh, this particular beer. So um, yeah, I think that rounds off the tasting section of the video. There, I'm a bit annoyed that I had that wee interruption there, but let's round off the review with the uh, the mouthfeel. Then overall, this beer is kind of at the top end of mid-bodied for me. The carbonation does have a little bit of a prickle to it, but again, with these bottle conditioned. Um, kind of Trappist beers, you're always going to get a little bit of that with them, um, but it works out uh, pretty nicely actually. Yeah, so mid-bodied. Oily and slick, but at the same time, your carbonation gives you a little bit of a prickle. Uh, the malty and yeasty side of this beer is quite smooth. I can definitely see why they get a little bit, they say on the, the bottle, you get a little bit of a herbally quality of this one, because the hops definitely give you that. This is quite a low IBU beer, though. I would be, pardon me, surprised if it's anything more than 15 IBUs. You're not getting a lot out of them. Um, out of this beer from that side of things but a lovely juicy fruity sort of thing you get a bit of a cakey vibe out of this one as well and a bit of that dried fruit kind of quality coming out um towards the uh the end of the flavor as well so yeah nice juicy kind of oily cakey fruits a wee bit of hoppy bitterness about 15 ibus or something like that then a nice kind of smooth um then a nice kind of smooth um kind of uh, bready bread crusty backbone and things it's got everything you would want so yeah it's a little bit like a Doppelbock, a little bit like a Belgian Dubel, somewhere kind of in the middle of those two styles, I would say. That probably summarises it quite nicely. But yeah, let's leave it at that for this review. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are. 
from Brara de Koenigshoven in their La Trap range. And uh, like I said earlier, we will no doubt return to these guys at some point in the near future. So thank you again for watching. Do check out my friends at the Dutch Beer Collective as well. Again, you'll find the links to their Facebook and Instagram page in the video description below. But thank you for watching. Check out my social media. Check out La Trap and uh, Brara de Koenigshoven. And I'll see you guys in the next review. Slange, skull, cheers, prost. This one was the La Trap bot beer coming in at 7% ABV from Brara de Koenigshoven and their La Trap range in Berkeley and Schutt in North Brabant down in the Netherlands. Catch you soon.